Hi, thanks to be here. Uh, I know it's late. I'll keep it short and simple as well, because uh, if you were in the previous session and a few researchers from CEDAR, and they already mentioned some of the topic that we're going to give. Uh, my name is Lina Xu, and uh, I'm from UCDM lecture in computer science. I do collaboration with CEDAR as well, and it's really interesting uh, research and projects going on in CEDAR at the moment. And you've probably seen this, so I'll just skip this at the moment. And what is the Internet of Things? And I searched online, and this is the official definition about IoT. So I'm going to read it. IoT refers to the networked interconnection of everyday objects, which are often equipped with ubiquitous intelligence. So that's the definition. But for us, like for our normal human being, what IoT could be, uh, normally, we look at IoT, Internet of Things, in two ways. One is the focus on the things. So things could be the couch, could be the floor, could be the chair, could be the door, could be the window. Uh, could be everything. Some of the things, they are able to connect to the Internet by default, like our phone, like our computer. But some of them, they can't connect to the uh, Internet by themselves, like uh, the chair. So in order to let them gain the ability, we equipped sensors or IoT devices into those objects so they can connect to the Internet. Uh, so there's one way to look at things, Internet of Things. Another one is looking at focus on the Internet. So we connect everything together. The purpose is use those things to collect the data. And so we can use the data, do predicted analysis on the data. So like us, like end user, we can gain power as well. That's why align with my title, see the invisible and the predict the unpredictable, because the internet allows us to gain that power. And as you can see from the previous picture as well, the number of devices is hugely dramatically increased. And here is the specific figure. Um, at the moment, uh, by 2020, by Cisco's analysis, each person going to have 6.6 .6 devices. And by uh, IDC, and the number even, even bigger, which is almost uh, 28 devices associated to one person. This can be easily predicted because imagine 10 years ago how many devices you have that can connect to the internet and how many you have at the moment. So this is going to be the trend for the next few years as well. And why? Why we need so many IoT devices? For example, the IoT market for different companies, they did a survey, uh, especially focused on the mid-market companies in the U.S. Mid-market uh, companies in the U.S., they are the main um, power for the successful for U.S. economic uh, so this, from this figure, you probably can see only 6% uh, they're not considering or they're still waiting for IoT solutions. So they're not in this area yet. But over 90% companies, they already deployed IoT solutions into their uh, different scenarios. Uh, like among all of these, 90%, 20, uh, almost 20% already have matured IoT solutions developed. What they are using these IoT solutions for, they are basically using, first, on um, first perspective, they're trying to increase the quality of service, increase the productivity, and increase the experiments, experiments of their employees, and also decrease the failure rate, decrease the cost, the waste, through all these solutions, and they can finally increase their revenue. And this is the one sensor normally we see. Of course, they came from different shape, um, different size as well, color maybe as well. And they are, they, this is the trick we use to make our things to gain, su uh, gain superpower, not, not superpower, gain more power. So if we deploy it at home, and our home will become smart, that's well called a smart home. And if we deploy in the farm, farm will be smart, and we call it smart farm, and in the city, we have smart cities. So that's 
the <laughs> that's the sensor. That's the little thing can do for us. And I'm going to give a few examples. The first one is the predict maintenance. One of my colleagues mentioned this. So I would like to see this predict maintenance as a, a game between you, uh, between the end operator or maintainer and the machine itself. A machine, especially in the industry pipeline, and uh, there's so many parts, there's components in this single machine. Each part, every single part can go wrong. So it's like a demon in, t in this machine. And this is a game between the demon and you. You have to catch it before actually it can do any damage to your machine. So it's just one solution is you send one person to go to check the machine every day. And everything. Uh, or even more frequent. But this is not an ideal solution. So we want to sit down on our chair and look at the computer, open your computer, and see the health condition of the machine and all this equipment. So you don't need to actually go there and have a look. And if you actually be there, and you can see what's going on inside your machine, inside the pipe, inside the lines, wires, uh, through your digital screen. So this is uh, predict maintenance. will bring us more convenience. And also, because this game, you want to catch the demon before it actually happens to avoid the failure. And it also will reduce the cost to prepare the machine, prepare the pipeline. And another one is a connected house. So this is one of the topics I'm involved in as well. And so, Failure, uh, falling detection, patient monitoring, health in healthcare in smart health scenario being talked aloud. Imagine if you're at home, a patient is at home, and the dart, his dart, and his activities and his health condition is monitored and tracked all the time. And those data were sent to the doctor or hospital. Based on those data analysis, you can get a personalized, specialized. Uh, Inscription. Um, this will highly improve the health condition of the patient. And another one is the smart man care, physical activity detection. So those things will help people to stop injury before it actually happens, decrease the crease. Another one, because the price of the IoT devices, they are decreasing and we can wildly deployed uh, in, our, in our home and the human body, we can uh, use the connected house. And all of these shareholders put them together, and we have this whole picture to benefit each person in this connected house scenario. Like we have hospitals, we have house keepers, and we also have the patient. So another one is smart transportation. So one example about smart transportation is smart parking. Smart parking now is not just about found the empty parking space, and it's also about how you park. We don't want something ha like this happened. We want each car, they can park into the exact uh, park slot and save a lot of space and look better as well. So something like this. And if we have something like this, more properly involved, so there's different layers, which, your car, which layer your car should go. This depends on user behavior, on the driver's behavior, how long you're going to stay in the car park. If you're going, going to stay half an hour, one hour, so lower layers will be accessed more, frequent, more frequently in order to reduce the energy consu consumption and the time consumption as well. This is the only one special scenario I want to introduce for smart parking. And also smart road. We have weather conditions and road uh, is put into different uh, locations. And like this, this, this type of road uh, damage could be detected by smart road system and the bridge as well, and the flood. So flood detection is one of the challenge Dublin um, Dublin government trying to push and uh, try to get researchers involved more as well. So, next one is smart traffic control, smart, 
smart traffic lights control, and road lighting as well. So all of this working together will make the traffic flow more and increase the fuel efficiency and reduce, highly reduce the time spent into the tra in the traffic. And also smart bike sharing. This is one of my favorites because I like to cycle in Dublin a lot. Uh, if we have more convenient bike sharing scheme and we have this smart helmet, like Volvo, they already proposed a solution. So this helmet, they can communicate with the cars. Cars can see the cyclist better. Even they didn't see it, the helmet will notice the car drivers of the existence of the cyclist. And also these smart lights, they can flash in different way, they can have different color in different scenario according to the traffic, or according to the light condition as well. So this, all of this will increase the safety of cyclists. And the smart public transportation. This always awkward situation, like you run for the bus or you wait for the bus in the rain for ages and the bus would just not come. And so all of this, if we can improve the coordination and the timetable, simply the timetable, and a lot of people will use public transportation. And this is what we're aiming for. If everybody is driving and the cars take a lot of space, as you can see, if all of the people, we put all of the people on the bus and it's just a small space and it's more fuel and energy efficiency and bicycles even better. So this is uh, all we're trying to do, improve, improve the transportation, make it smarter and also improve our environment. So we also have other use cases